guys can go for it. Yeah, okay. Right, so we're sitting here in Cape Town with two fantastic gentlemen. We've got Induna and Chari on the right, on the left there, as you're looking at you. And of course, we've got Rian Manson. Now, Rian is one of the great adventurers of the world. I first met you, Rian, when you were doing around, paddling around the blinking Atlantic, or what do you call it, the Arctic. Uh, Iceland, yeah. Yeah, in Iceland. Oh, well, it's, a, it's an adventure of nuts. And of course, you know, it's also an adventure of nuts because you have to be an adventurer as a truck driver in South <laughs> oh, Africa. Of course, I am. Uh, right. Yeah. Now, you have just arrived in Cape Town on the One Man Can uh, um, a project. You've done 13,234 kilometers, although take off 1,200 so till you get to Joburg. You've been through nine countries, 11 border crossings, 53 days. It's really a, a, a fantastic trip you've done. And I've been watching the videos and the, the scenery, all that there. But there's a more serious side to it. You know, when we're looking at Sub-Saharan Africa, over the past few years, the emerging economies have been the attractive uh, targets for investment over and above the developed economies. We're talking inter-regional trade in Africa. We're talking emerging economies. Sub-Saharan Africa is being very much looked at, punted by companies like DHL as the new growth zone, even today, in a bit of an economic downturn. You have traveled through this. In the context of that, as I've just sketched, how do you see the truck drivers being, one, so respect for the critical role they play in the development of the economies, two, the hindrances like corruption, the border delays, we talk transport efficiency for global competitiveness, uh, the driver facilities, because we need comfortable drivers to be productive drivers, the threats on the road, and that type of thing, guys. How did you find it? Well, let's start with you first. Because you, you've been up in Africa before, hey, Duna. You have oh, driven, yes. and by the way, Duna is mainline driver, great company. Real, he drives anything, canoes um, or anything. I, no, I'm an independent driver. You're an independent driver. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to the last NASA last <laughs> space rocket before it went off and just let go and it exited out this year. And he ran out of oxygen. How do you find it, Real? Yeah, listen, being a novice, I think you see things through a very uh, clear lens, you know, it hasn't been tainted by, um, you know, the industry over so many years. So that's, I mean, that's one benefit I see from our side. Of course, Nduna sees it from an experience side, but um, goodness, if you're asking me just to be blatant about it, um, you painted that picture about where trucking fulfills a role in industry and in e economies. And if we're looking at a SADC region that's supposed to be um, linked in so many ways, not just infrastructure, in so many ways, there has to be something wrong in that 2015 a truck can't move easily through a border. So, do I know what the problems are over there? No, of course I don't. And Duna might have some idea, but still he would be confused in understanding why a truck can't move easily through a border post, if it's supposed to be the, the, the life and the bloodstream of an economy. You were held up at one border post. I think you were quite agitated when you held up for three hours, and I think I commented at the time that that's good. You <laughs> then went on to a border post for 50 hours, is that yeah. correct? That's correct. And now that's just the difference I'm speaking of. I'm not speaking of the three hour. Come on, let's have those guys doing their jobs that, um, that people's livelihoods are still looked after. So if people are doing illegal things, let's have a trained staff that can check those things. So I mean, you get there in good spirits to a border post. You get there in the spirit that you're going to travel into the next country and do some good, deliver cargo, collect new cargo, and it doesn't go smoothly. 60 hours should never be a norm. At some of those borders, 60 hours is a lucky figure. That would be considered good going. Mm -hmm. It can't be. That can't be realistic. And now, Duna, have you traveled, have you traveled up Africa quite a bit, or have you mainly been uh, driving locally in your yeah. past? Yeah, I've, I've been driving uh, at least uh, from South Africa up to the furthest point of Zambia, uh, which is normally uh, what I do. But further north, like northeast of Africa, like when we went uh, through to Tanzania, I was puzzled by the delay we got there because I expect at the entry point uh, is where you get all the regulations and the rules of a certain country that you need to, to abide by as you drive along that country. But to my surprise, like we were delayed because of our length of the vehicle, of which we should have uh, got that uh, information as we entered the border, but we didn't get that information. And then inland, inside, after we had gone through a lot of uh, checkpoints, then they are saying your your truck is, is is abnormal. We need an abnormal uh, permit. 
to me that was a surprise. And how did you get through that? Is that it was a bribe asked for, or was did you have to pay a bribe to get through that? Because bribery has been reported by truck drivers up north has been rampant. Of course, you see, uh, corruption is. I think it's one of the most uh, hindrance in a, in a driver's journey. You get stopped for apparent uh, no reason. Actually, that guy will be looking for something for a kickback. Out of nothing, he can look for any any uh, false fault. Then he can penalize you on that. So actually, I can say, corruption is very rife in Africa, especially when you drive further north of Africa. It's, it's uh, a dangerous uh, uh, act. I Patrick, Dindini yeah. speaks of it in a business sense. He speaks of it in a business sense where you know these guys are expecting kickbacks. You can imagine how emotional I would get about it because that is not how I see the world from a from an outsider. I cannot understand somebody who's got a job, somebody who is in a position of power already, does not value it first of all because he's trying to to earn an income in, on, in another way, but also the frustration for Dindini saying that um, the the way that we are getting penalized is illegal, and it is. I mean, people are not finding credible ways of saying, shucks, your truck is not roadworthy. Mm. Imagine, we're sitting with a brand new truck Chuck. that is the best vehicle in the southern part of Africa, and we get pulled over every single place and told that we do a fine. Now, that should baffle you. So for me, it's an emotional thing. I just can't believe that people who've got jobs actually make... Um, life difficult for a person who's honorable, who does it for his living, taking a salary home to his family, and also carrying cargo that's making his life better in his country, the intelligence says to him, let me get my $10 or $20 or $100 from this guy for no reason. It's, it's a bit more of a, I think it's a way more emotional discussion than just a business discussion. Because as you touched on first, is that it's known, it's relevant, and um, it's rampant. So what do business owners do? They give the guy a few extra bobs so that he can look after the problems along the route. That's only feeding the monster. Yeah. And um, so it sounds to me like the trucker is an easy target to make money. Nduna says to me that he's sitting with, when he does trips, for him, it's he's sitting with his boss's cargo, his boss's pressure on him, and he doesn't want to let his boss down. Of course he's going to try to get out of the situation. Yeah, it must, you see, uh, a trucker, the thing that is most important about a trucker is time, time management. So these, uh, these are like uh, authorities or officers, I can say, they, they take advantage of that. The trucker is always in a hurry. So they will try to, to get a few dollars away from you through dubious uh, way. So and because truck. because of that time management, you are like, you'll be late, you'll be delayed maybe for two hours for, for five dollars. Yeah. Then in the end, you are forced to fork out. Yeah. So that's... And that's one thing I learned on this journey. That's one thing what Nduna touches now on about is, I learned that if I was being asked to bribe, I was there on a bicycle around the continent of Africa, 20 kilometers an hour, never paid one cent in a bribe. Never. So you can understand my mentality. I'm saying, not a chance am I going to feed a criminal element of you. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to feed this criminal element. When Duna's sitting with this time factor, he's saying, shucks, $5, yeah. or I'm going to lose $2,000 for the business. Come on, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Say, where? I had the luxury on the bicycle. I put the bicycle down and say, hey, I've got all the time in the world. <laughs> right, it's two different modes of transport. Totally. Interesting, the one targeted is an easy target, and the other one, because they know that your time constraints, the other one yes. not targeted because you've got all the time yeah, in the world. So they know the matter structure. Uh, Duny, you were going to say something? Yeah, you imagine just uh, being delayed at the border, for the whole day, then th that guy is looking for $10. Then if you, the, if you calculate how much you are going to spend at that border, you are going to spend more, maybe $20. Then sometimes you are forced to fork out that $10 and they let you go. Yeah. So at most it's all about time and the cost of staying in one place for too long. Okay, now um, on that one, we were talking earlier about the respect of truck drivers. I, I, I've always said that they're the unsung heroes of rumor economy. Do you feel the drivers are given a respect on the route, on the route you drive? It's like, you ask, it's like you're asking me, should I respect a taxi driver? Taxi drivers in South Africa take people to work, take, take people away back to their families from the 
deepest, darkest parts of Soweto and um, uh, places where you wouldn't imagine people climb onto taxis. But hey, if I ask anybody in the room, what is your experience with a taxi driver? It wouldn't be a good one. And I think that's what it comes down to. Drivers deserve the respect, of course. They're doing an honourable job and it's a tough job. But there's some drivers out there that really drag their reputation through the mud of other drivers. So I think that's what lingers in people's minds as motorists. So the bad apple is supposed to... Uh, Without a doubt. Yeah. Because we, we, as I said, we'd all agree that taxi drivers that ferry people to work and back are great people. They do a great thing for our economy. But none of us see a taxi driver in a, a beautiful light. Yeah. Mm. So the two big things that came, you came across was the border delays, impacting on time management, because that's what you're talking about, Joe, is, is the trucking being the, the wheels of Africa at the moment, because rail is not doing it, and, um, and corruption. And um, also a, a lack of respect, but some drivers say that's their own fault. Hmm. Um, the other thing is driver facilities up there. Those guys are driving long and hard and bad roads, and what are the driver facilities like? Can they be improved? Or parking facilities? Do you feel safe where you can park? Are there any truck? Are the truck stops adequate? Yeah, I think uh, when you are driving a truck through South Africa, I can safely say you are in luxury. But as you drive further north, you cross the, the Limpopo River further north, then the facilities start to deteriorate. That's the infrastructure from the roads to the truck stops. Sometimes they call it a truck stop way, but it's just a, an open space. There's no toilet, no recreational facilities. It's a luxury to drive through uh, South Africa, not further north. Some guys would argue with you that there aren't recreational facilities available. Yeah, you see, a trucker, what a trucker needs, you, when you get to your like, a truck stop, you need a shower, you need to shower, you need uh, food, you don't want to get to a place and start uh, taking out your, your gas stove, start to cook uh, some yeah. food. You need somewhere where you can just go and buy your food so that you can uh, have enough time to rest. But uh, as you drive further north of Africa, then hey, it's, a, it's a problem. We okay. don't have enough facilities like we have in South Africa. So with the inter-regional trade being muted, we need to improve those facilities for truck drivers because the trucks are driving the trade. They are the wheels of the trade. Oh, yes, of course. So, and they're not there. They haven't been attended to. Uh, it's a little attention is being uh, put on that uh, in that respect. Otherwise, you have to make a plan to, yeah. to be comfortable on your own. Yeah. yeah. But also yeah. business owners busy pushing the drivers to get through and get the load done and delivered by a certain time. If you could break up that journey to a rest stop, not just one. So we're not just talking about Durban, Harry Smith is your only stop and then you've got Joburg, something could go wrong, change a tyre, the guy would have to now shoot for something past Harry Smith, unsafe, um, at night, come on, it makes logic to have some truck stops, but obviously you need some business or a, a, a bit of an economic element in that truck stop, because when the guys park the trucks, take up big spaces, big pieces of land, there needs to be a little bit of economic plan around a truck stop. Some are successful because they've got a lot of visitors. But sure, I know a lot of guys, um, when Duna's normal trip is up into Zambia, that route, so we drove some of that from Tet coming down, and they aren't really organized truck stops. They're just where the guys gather. And some of the places that he pointed out were real organized. Some are just areas where you park a truck. That's nothing it. No toilet, no, mm. no nothing here. Guys, HIV AIDS followed the truck routes north, down south, to the point where the entry became a new AIDS highway. I'm talking 95, 96, 97. Um, what's the commercial sex worker situation along the routes like? Still quite vibrant down here. Is, that, uh, is there a bit of control <laughs> there? We didn't see much action. Yeah, but I can I say... I see much action. <laughs> no, we didn't see I can anything. say, uh, with what I have been reading, in the 90s to late 20s, I mean early 20s, yeah, AIDS pandemic was was a little bit of a, a problem, but right now I think most of the drivers they are aware yeah, of, 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 of this uh, epidemic or uh, the disease. I think most of the companies are having programs to conscientize the drivers about the dangers of uh, casual sex, uh, the good the good of practicing uh, safe sex. Yeah, things like that. I think most of the companies are 
having those programs to conscientize the drivers. So we've come a long way on that. On we, that, on that one. we have come a long way. Otherwise, uh, we are meeting a little or no uh, prostitutes along the way. Have we met some? Yeah, as you can say, I heard so much about it. We, I think our truck was too fancy. <laughs> yeah, I think, but, but the yeah, normally they should have been knocking. Still, as long as it was fancy, I think we could have attracted a lot of ladies around the track. But I think uh, these ladies, uh, they are... There's education about no, it. I, I think they are, there's so much education That's now out, out to the community. People are becoming aware of the dangers of uh, casual sex. Ryan, what made you scared? Were you ever scared? Ah, oh, just driving out of... Um, out of Pine Town, um, it's all about confidence. And then if you could just make, I, I can see the type of driver that a good business would like to employ. So you'd like somebody who's respectful, understanding you're holding that 56 tons in this little piece of plastic. Um, you are the biggest danger on the road for others, not even for yourself. And then um, moving that from confidence, where I have become confident, to not border on cockiness or pushing it. And um, uh, I was scared in the beginning. I mean, that first little bit I did coming up from Harry Smith, coming up towards Joburg, I mean, going through a lot of traffic, I can do that now very comfortably because I've seen way worse on where we've been. But, of course, I think the, the road conditions do make you scared. I still get, my heart still flutters when those massive trucks that I think are going way above the speed limit are flying past you and you're going um, rear view mirror, rear view mirror past each other. Um, that's scary, no matter who you are. And um, and Duna knows also at night, I mean, I, when I did a lot of the night driving and till one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning when we didn't plan that. And it's scary with people just running out in the way and drunk people and animals. And um, a truck is a totally different beast. I drove my car for the first time last night after this journey. And my car is not a small car. And I said, I couldn't believe how tiny my car is easy to move around. And my um, girlfriend was just laughing at me and laughing and saying, I would have never have said that before. Big responsibility driving a big truck like that. Okay, you're sitting next to a professional driver here, the great Jinduna Chari, who, by the way, was selected by MAN customers, who went throughout, just uh, for those listening, went throughout the customer base, asked for the top drivers, and you were selected from Manline as Manline selected as their top driver. So you're sitting next to a professional driver, right? you had four days training. You looked at him, you know, you've driven many, many kilometers with him. What's your image of a truck driver now compared to what it was before? Because uh, anyone thinks you can just drive a truck, especially with the yeah. new technology. I think it's a bit of a fallacy to say anyone can drive a truck, yes. no matter what the technology Yeah, of course. What's your impression of a truck driver now? What do you need? Well, I'm glad I trained with somebody like Induna. Goodness, I mean, I, we've got um, same values, you know, about certain things. We, we like discipline. We don't... We're a bit difficult when it comes to certain things, and we um, there's the basis values I think that we have. So I can share that with him, and I understand. And he's also disciplined; takes pride in his work, which is something I feel is lacking in many industries, not just even the trucking industry. Pride in your work, no matter what you do, defines you as a character. But also, then just it just it it, it shines to any other person around you. When Duna steps out of his truck, I know people look at him and say, "Shucks, there's a proud guy," you know. And um, so first of all, that was a privilege to be able to learn from the right type of person. But my image of a truck driver, goodness, you know, it's a, it goes so far reaching. And Duna's got a family, takes money home. People don't even think of that when they drive past the truck. People are ungrateful when they, they don't say, hey, great, what is this truck carrying? What is this? Oh, this truck's going there. Nobody gives it a thought. It's an irritation. So... Give you an example, coming yesterday into Cape Town, I tried to just get in Duna to understand maybe how a driver feels sitting behind a vehicle as big as a truck as ours and going 80 kilometers an hour when you know you can be home three, four hours quicker if you can just pass this truck. The truck's not really irritating, but there's a level of frustration. If you educate the driver to understand this truck, driver is a human being, family, and he's doing good, and he's obeying the laws by not going into the yellow line, whole new world frustration level will drop and it's both ways you have to learn i think truck drivers in Anduna's world they get good training and they get the they they, they probably get taught more logic than the average truck driver logic is probably the denominator that makes a truck driver good or not good mm, wonderful 
because I think that would be good. to say something on that? How you? Yeah. Is, is a truck driver a good uh, uh, place for a youngster to come to uh, for a career? Yeah, but you have to learn it. Experience is, is no substitute. There's no substitute for experience. Always, uh, you have to learn it. You have to go up through the ranks. Uh, most people they don't understand uh, what it means to drive it to take a load from one point A to point B. It's not all about the, the driving the engine, the horse. At most, you are driving the load. At most, most people they don't they don't realize that you are actually driving the load that you are pulling on behind you. Because you don't expect me to just to go off the road and make way for you while I'm pulling a, a high load. Yeah. There are certain things that I have to consider. Do I have to stay on the lane and, and take my load to, uh, to, to my destination or I just have to go off and uh, give my, my load a risk? No. It's mostly it's about driving the load, taking the load safely to where it's, it's, it's going. Wonderful. Now, I'm going to interrupt you there because we've got your Dave from Grom. Dave, why don't you just come into the picture, yeah? Just get no, so no, sit there and that's fine. Let's get in between the two guys. That, that, we should be with making some adjustments, yeah? Uh, because just a quick one. Uh, I was concerned when we only had four days driving and then going on this driver training and a property driver and then put in a truck. I was very relieved when I saw you next to him. Because the problem today is a lot of inexperienced truck drivers have been out on the road. They've been employed by people, putting out there on their own. You've introduced profit driving into the country, though. Tell us quickly about what's, what, you, what your plans are with profit driving. Introduce uh, from Germany. Patrick, uh, profit drive, it's uh, for professional drivers by professionals. We need to marry man and machine. Uh, we, we're dealing with some very sophisticated technology these days. But you can only optimize that technology with a real pro behind the controls. And uh, I think this has been a, a mission accomplished exercise for us when we have a pro of the likes of Nduna coming into the fray to basically drive an MAN product which has got new technology coming out of the MAN family. And somebody like Rian, who's a courageous, adventurous guy, but a novice to the trucking business, having gone through the program, it was really a very, uh, as I say, mission accomplished, a very good learning exercise for us. A, very important that Profi Drive can give you the basics. You certainly still have to get your driver's license. You've got to get your professional driving permit. You've got to get the basics. But of course, you then need a seasoned hand to really perfect and polish you. And that's, that's what this journey has proven to us. Uh, and hopefully as our future ambassadors for Profi Drive, Rian and Nduna. Well, I see it as a, the, they make, put it like a, the theory of Profi Drive, the experience of the experienced driver and the learner coming in under the experienced driver, grabbing the theory first, and that's how it works together to get a professional ride. Mm, very much so. Last question. Ron, how does this compare to your other crazy adventures yeah. that you've done? <laughs> hey, uh, I like it that, that I think Dave says um, that I'm courageous. I, I like the idea because everybody is actually. It's just, you know, when you find something that tickles your fancy. For me, driving a truck, and Duna said it so well, he said, did you think six months ago you would have been driving a truck? I can tell you that the answer was clearly no. Did I think ever in my life I would drive a truck? I tell you, I'm going to be bragging for the next few years coming where I've driven a truck because most haven't. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, listen, and do that. Ryan, you guys are stars, Dave. Great program that you put together, and uh, you've got another 1,200 k's to go. Don't get hijacked along the way. Okay? <laughs> but you've got telematics and you've got protection and all Absolutely. that. So that we'll talk about uh, there's enough on the MAN. I'll say just thank you so much and congratulations on this magnificent trip. Yes, thank thing. you. It's proved a lot of good things and a lot has come out of it, apart from riding a great truck. Thanks, thank you, Patrick. Thanks, Rion. Thanks, Nduna. Thanks, Scott.